Hi everyone. Good morning. This is the eighth video and maybe the last video in GCL with respect to content. In this video, we are going to see uh, the standalone topics or the topics I missed to cover in the earlier respective uh, videos. Okay. First, let us um, look into if structure in JCL. We have already seen um, uh, you know condition in detail as part of exact video. And uh, if it's the other way, uh, you want to conditionally execute a step uh, one way or either way, uh, you can do it either through can't or through if. Can't we have seen if we are going to see now. And um, see what uh, what we are doing here is uh, this is on IEF we are holding, this is ID cap setting resume, you know, max code is, uh, max is CS4. So step two return code is four. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking step two return code is eight. If 8, I am executing this step, otherwise I am executing this step. Muthu doesn't have a load module, so this is going to append. So next I am checking if this step is step 4 dot append equal to true, then I am executing this step. So this is how you will do a validation and you need to have a space here. If it's a statement, if should be followed by then, whatever comes after that, okay, all these steps will be executed if this condition is true. If the condition is false, the else part whatever we coded will execute. This is you know a if instead of if. Okay, that is a that is like any other programming language. Okay, so you need to end with end if. And here I have simply check for the return code. You can also check whether the particular step dot append equal to true means like you know I covered here right like this. If only if it is appended, this step will execute. It's something like to count only, something like Okay, then step dot run equal to true. This will execute only if a particular step executed. Okay, um, next step is not equal to step not run. Okay, you want to execute something, you know, uh, uh, some steps executed only one particular step doesn't run. You can use like this, like step two not run. And also on top of it, um, append has happened, but you want to check a specific append code also, it is possible. Like how you coded your return code, you can also check append code. That is something like step dot append cc equal to what is append, like SI06. Like this also specifically for specific abends alone, we, can, we want to you know divert the path also, that is also possible. Okay, These are the various um, conditions we can code within if. Now let's try it out. So what I expect here, return code 4, so else path it will take, so this will execute, this is append, so this will become, so this will execute, step 4 and step 5 I expect to be executed. 806 is append, that's fine, but we need to see, step 4 and 5 executed, okay, 4 is abandoned, <coughs> 5 is executed, so both are executed. Of course, since load module output, it failed with abandoned. Because of its abandoned, it, it executed. Okay, now if at all, if we put IFBR14 here, what happens is, step 4 abandoned is not true. So this step will not execute. Only step 4 get executed. Step 5 is flushed. I think I would have already said in um, con video, but anyway, I'll tell you in case you are referring a step which is not executed, okay, then that condition will be looked like a dummy condition, like you know, uh, I'll say this is con equal to only. So, what does it mean now? So, the step 2 is not going to execute, but there is a return code check against step 2. So, this check is kind of, you know, uh, it's not right because the step itself has it run. So it's automatically take the else path. Okay. <coughs> that is what I want to say. Any conditions uh, are, I mean, the same is applicable in con stuff also. Okay. You are referring a return code of a check, but that step itself is not executed. Automatically take the else path of it. Aware well, of this. So now I expect um, step. Four to be executed. Since step two didn't run, 
step 4 would have run or step 3 would not have run okay step 3 flushed so in all our examples step 3 is skipped so let's see step 3 execution once step 3 first right. step 2 or oh, step 2 didn't run okay. okay so I think um, this is good enough um, to understand the if statement and how to code it and um, next I'll talk on something um, that would be would have covered as part of procedure <coughs> that is um, include okay uh, include member level include also uh, whatever the static content you want to include in your JCL like you know in your test environment you may want to set up lot of um, symbolic parameters for your job okay or you want to give a job lib which is common okay job lib will be usually common across um, jobs in a particular environment and belonging to um, you know set of applications so those things you want to code it as a hard, you know, um, statically you want to include means you can, you need to bring into your RAM. Um, um, job means um, you will be using uh, includes. Okay, if you see what is devil it is here. Devil is nothing but it, it's at the job lib and it also said set of um, parameters default values. Okay, so that is what include. Okay, include where it will be looked up, it will same like it will be looked into JCL lib and um, in the library what you coded against in JCL lib, there it will be looked up and it will get expanded. Okay, same like procedure but you cannot do override or you know those things are it's simple static copy of the content into mainstream from the member. That's it. Okay, so if you go and see. Okay, it's expanded. Next, nested procedure. I don't think I talk on nested procedure in our procedure video. Anyway, it is not extra, you know, used in real time, but um, you just be aware of it. Nested procedure is allowed. Nested procedure means like um, procedure A calls procedure B, B calls C, then we call this as a nested procedure. This level of nesting like A calling B, B calling C, C calling D, this level of nesting maximum is 15. 15 levels of nesting is possible. But you also aware that override of like you know C something you coded. You want to override or nullify it that can be done only in B. It cannot be done in A. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So keep that in mind. So um, whatever the overriding you want to do that is possible only in the calling level it cannot do in the um, uh, you know in the upper levels further upper levels okay and that's it it's a small concept but anyway we can try it out one I am calling a DUPL proc here if you see DUPL this in turn call DUPL2 so it's a nested procedure now DUPL2 so this is again a copy okay anyway, this I already executed right there so you can see so if you see Duple is expanded inside it again. This one is execution expanded. Okay. So this is called nested procedure. Not a complex concept. Okay. Next left three, left two. What I have coded. Mm. Oh, this is outlim. Okay. Just aware of one statement. We you know uh, uh, statement called outlim. Outlim is used for limiting the outputs. Like you know I am setting I am setting four is four. I mean outlim equal to four. So if uh, more than four lines are coming, what happens is uh, the step will be abending. Uh, abending with, with what append? S722. Okay, that uh, sysout limit is violated. With that append, it will append. Okay, that we will see it here on. Outlim I put four oh, DD card, meaningful sharp. S722 abend. Okay, 
we'll go and see what what has happened we will see 6 okay so the lines are exceeded so you got a amen okay now that is about your outline parameter <coughs> and you also remember that um, maybe you may want to look into yes 722 aben cases in detail which i would have covered as part of a aben um, uh, aben solution series okay and if you see that uh, yes 722 is come usually when the limit is um, you know violated so in, since i coded outlim here and i am trying to restrict it you got a 722 but even if i don't code it if your sysout exceeds some system defined limit like you know uh in our installation it is a 1 meg if it is going you know more than 1 meg of lines you will get a s722 yes, operator will cancel your job with s722 yes, okay now those cases for whatever reason you want to override okay i don't want my program to be abandoned um, even after 1 lakh lines of uh, lines return into sysout ideally you should not do that because too much of writing in sysout may slow your um, uh, system uh, to everyone um, you know working in that area okay so um, you should not do that but for whatever reason you know theoretical purpose you 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 see how you put it in a data set and browse and see why you need to put so much of um, uh, things in spool but anyway still as a theory perspective you want to do it means the option is lines the lines as i said limit is now one you know one meg and you can very well give here like this so 9 meg is allowed now so and also you can have the lines parameter warning or dump or cancel can be coded warning means just a warning will come and dump means job will be amended and dump will be provided cancel means your job will be simply cancel with a 722 okay so the lines parameters is one thing one one parameter is um, you know very rarely coded in the job card and the meaning of is meaning of it is is this okay uh, that's it then this is over outlim parameter is over lines and so on you would have done in um, i think s722 Aben solution series. So I'm skipping. You can also very well try. Let's see what I have coded. Mm. Uh, this is a refer back. Refer back is a concept. Uh, you know, you want to um, refer the previous DD or DCB, which is in the same um, uh, job in the prior step or the same step. The refer back operator helps you. What is refer back? Refer back is nothing but. Uh, a uh, what is refer back operator it is just a star wherever star comes except leave this this star means that in stream data uh, wherever you see for example this star this star is a refer back operator where the where it is referring this out is star means it is referring to message class x so message class x is um, you know um, uh, destination is pointed to spool so your this out star also will come in the spool so this star is the operator similarly you know you can very well code like this If I code star dot step one dot sysu two one sysu two means DSN. I am not hard coding. I am referring the DSN, which is um, you know a DSN of sysu two DD of step one of this job. So sysu two step one. So what happens automatically? That sysu two this data set is getting substituted here. So this refer back is provided here sample as a DSN. you can do it for uh, you know a um, volume or um, you know some disp uh, like you know other parameters or even for pgm parameters and all you can do the refer back see here about i did here i am reading volume ref um, you know our reference equal to star dot strip 01 dot ccut2 what does it mean i am saying that allocate me the data set in the same volume of this data set that is what i am saying here okay so maybe i can run this here This data set. Not sure it is there. I will try to delete it. That also. Okay. Okay. Ended. Now I'll see what is data one. So data one contain this line, and data two is contain. It is copying this data set to this data set. So that also will contain this line, and also the volume of both will be of same. That is what we want to see here. Okay, both are on C volume, and if you see content, outlim, outlim. 
I, that is what refer back maybe i'll show you refer back theory this is a refer back so how you can refer back to refer another dd in the same step you can use star dd name star dot dd name dd in a different step you do star dot step name dot dd name refer another dd in a in a step that is in, inside the proc do like start a uh, star dot step that invokes the proc dot proc step dot dd name okay this is um how you will be referring back mm. so do to refer back um i think we are good um maybe you know um you need to volume these parameters i would not have covered um uh, but the volume you know uh, in the real time you know as i already said in part of um, sb37 urban so you know we may be using like this okay comma 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 uh nine if you do you know um in a nine volumes um the data set will be allocated which is uh, one of the way why how we solve the sb37 otherwise the volume parameter in real time we hardly use and um, um uh, label parameters also it's only for tape tape data set um at times very rarely we use so what we'll do is um, volume and um, label parameters i'll um, i'll cover it um, sometime i'll be talking on you know uh, mainframe basics and um, like you know what are the various data sets available like you know ps pds um, uh, um you know tape you know dash trees and the various like you know 3380 3390 the differences how many um tracks forms a cylinder i mean what is track what is cylinder what is block what is um, advantages of blocking all these things you know sometimes when i have time i'll put a separate video there i'll talk more on volume and um, label as well okay so with this we'll conclude um, jcl session and um, maybe uh, i'll put you know uh, like you know ftp jcls or ndm jcls like you know some sample jcls you know uh, whatever may be useful for you which we have been covered i try to put in the same video a comment session as um, you know sample jcls okay i'll write so you can refer the jcl if needed um otherwise we are good i'll i'll, I'll put uh, two more videos one video is on um, um like you know faqs frequently asked faqs and um, if possible one more video that has a mock up interview with couple of um, guys um, you know who express interest to have a um, mock ups okay so i'll do two more videos but they are all like you know kind of interviews and faqs they are not um, content oriented one okay so we are done with jcl thanks for watching thanks everyone